Hello and welcome to the interview on France 24. My guest today was the first female deputy speaker of parliament in Afghanistan. She's fought relentlessly for women's rights in her country and sat face to face with Taliban leaders during peace talks in Doha. Fauzia Kufi, thank you for being with us on France 24. Thank you for having me. Welcome to the show. You've been called a feminist who uh, dares to face the Taliban. Do you agree with that description? Uh, it depends on how you define feminism. Um, many people think that feminism contradicts Islam, while I believe that um, you can still be a feminist and you could still be a Muslim woman or have your faith. On that context, um, I wanted to talk with Taliban and make them understand that um, you know we are all um, citizens with equal rights. They must respect uh, the rights of everyone, including women, and live in, in coexistence, basically. You were part of the negotiating team representing the then Afghan government that met with the Taliban in Doha and Moscow. How was it to sit at the same table as uh, these Taliban leaders? Well, I was representing uh, the state and my people. Um, of course, I have gone through so much personally during Taliban and the civil war and since my childhood. As my father was killed, my brothers were killed, my husband was post, uh, uh, put in jail, in you prison. You yourself, you've also survived two uh, assassination attempts. And the last one, last August, which also my arm was injured, um, a few centi different from my shoulder, the bullet uh, hit me. Um, I had gone through so much that initially, personally, it is not easy to face a group that uh, committed so many things in front of you, uh, including personally to you, but I also saw what went wrong to the other people in the time that Taliban were in power, first time. So it was back not in personally- Back in 2001. Back in, uh, yeah, from yeah, 2001, uh, from 1996 to 2001. Personally, it was not easy for me to adjust myself and to be able to, you know, digest that. But um, um, what was giving me the sense of power was that, you know, I am sitting across the table with the same group that they claim they own Afghanistan and they are the first class citizens while they regard women as second class citizens. But now we are representing the whole country. I had the legitimacy of representing my people while they were abroad for 20 years. They were not representing the people of Afghanistan and they do not. So I was feeling powerful yet personally in a very difficult situation. But for the cause of my country, for the cause of uh, peace in Afghanistan and a life with dignity, I wanted to be uh, there and I, I pursued my cause. Would you be willing to work with the Taliban today? Depending on what Taliban, uh, you know, uh, behave. If Taliban behave the same way that they knew, do now, uh, no woman in their government, no woman in the public and education uh, sphere, um, no religious minorities, no ethnic representation, certainly not. But we all have to work now to form an inclusive government where there are ethnic groups, there are um, religious minorities, women also part of it, and we need to restore constitutional order because right now there is a few people that form the government, it is not representative, there is no legitimacy for that. Where have they got the legitimacy from war? Not from the people, not from the voting, not from- Not from uh, an election. An election and yeah, constitution, no. Do you believe the Taliban would be ready to allow a woman to be a part of the political process? They have no option but to do that. Uh, it's not for, for them, it's not a choice. Uh, they need to work with women of Afghanistan. It is not a matter of choice. If it was a choice, they have made their choice very clear that they don't want a woman to work or go to school, but they need to because women are not only a social political need of the society, but also they're part of the economic, um, uh, you know, prosperity and growth of Afghanistan. How could um, a nation or a, a group claim that they are uh, ruling a country with men and women and uh, oppress 55% of their society? So it's bigger my cause and the fact that we now, the women of Afghanistan, are protesting on the street 
asking our rights is beyond just having few women in the government. We want equality and justice. That equality and justice should be from top to bottom of the government, every layers of the society. Was the fate of Afghan women ever discussed during the Doha talks? Uh, not in the Doha agreement, in the Doha talks, because we were discussing on um, agenda items and Taliban put women rights discussion the last point of agenda, because for them it was so important. We were discussing other issues, um, but in Moscow, when, we first, when I first met Taliban as the only woman, they actually presented their position about women rights, and then they said, women can be a minister, prime minister, judges uh, in, engage in so, social and political structure. But uh, unfortunately, they did say that to look moderate to get the Doha agreement with Americans. They were not uh, genuine in what they said because now we know that they are actually doing on the contrary to what they said. So you saying that they were doing that just to please the international community, the Western powers? Apparently that's what they did because they wanted to get the agreement signed and that's what they did. Their agreement with the United States for the U.S. withdrawal was signed on the 29th of February last year and we started the negotiations in September and they were never actually serious about negotiations. So we were discussing. Many times we proposed to discuss a political power sharing. They were not ready to discuss because they were waiting for a military victory after the Americans withdraw. So I think they were not meaningful, uh, meaningfully uh, serious and genuine on what they said during the negotiation or during the dialogues about women's rights, but also about other issues. After what we've vi witnessed in Afghanistan since mid-August, do you feel abandoned by uh, what we call the international community, by uh, the United States and Europe? Unfortunately, they made uh, the, the, the Western world, I would say, made a lot of mistakes. And as a result of their mistakes, we're facing what we are facing now in Afghanistan. Um, if, uh, you know, the Doha agreement was not negotiated between Americans and Taliban only, and the Afghan state, the politicians, the government, the institutions, um, a, a, a political opposition, like people like us, if we were included in the uh, process when Americans talked with Taliban, I think the result would have been so different. When uh, President Biden announced withdrawal on uh, September, it could have been better managed to avoid collapse of institutions. Yes, in Afghanistan we had a corrupt, weak government, power-centric, not connected with the local community. That was our problem, but also internationally. I think um, we faced, unfortunately, we are now in a situation as a result of the mistakes of uh, many superpowers, I would say. Here in France, you've met with Prime Minister Jean Castex. What are you asking the French government? Two things, um, humanitarian aid for people of Afghanistan to go directly to the people of Afghanistan because winter is coming, millions of people do not have job, especially women who were the breadwinners of their family, they were the f female, they were heading their family basically. You know that during war they lost their husbands, their male member of the family. They are on the ground with no jobs, no opportunity, no income. I'm in contact with them on daily basis and I know their pain. I know that how difficult it is for them to feed their family. So they need to receive uh, support and that support should be channeled in a way that it doesn't empower Taliban and should not be instrumentalized by Taliban. And the second thing was that there were a lot of people, um, journalists and uh, judges and uh, activists, including my own uh, you know, colleagues and people who work with me, and they continue to protest in the streets. Uh, they are still there in hiding, basically. Um, when a lot of journalists saw me, uh, my pictures and others in France, they keep contacting me from Afghanistan asking for support because they were in the mainstream outlets, including you know, some of these popular TV, they're still in Afghanistan. So I asked the prime minister and others, and I now ask them through this interview to award um, humanitarian visa for these people because I'm surprised that they are still in Afghanistan and they are not you know, being heard. Probably they're living under a very difficult situation. You think that France isn't doing enough to welcome Afghan refugees? No, I mean, they, they have done great uh, comparing to many European countries, I guess, but I think there is more expectation because you are a country 
um, uh, you know, standing for these values of freedom of thought, freedom of speech, liberation. Now, those people who actually stood in full front of protecting these values, they need to come to France or other countries for some time, until their own country is safe. I feel sorry to say this, but, um, but we don't have other option. I want them to be in Afghanistan because that's what they are needed. But now it's not safe for them. So they need to come here until they're the, they're the power of Afghanistan. It's a very accomplished generation. And it's not good if they leave Afghanistan, but there is no option because uh, you know that uh, recently the journalists have been killed. Um, they they ha search houses, uh, women activists, you know how they behave with them. So I think they need to be um, moved to a safer place. France has done its part, but more expectation. You yourself, you started your political career in 2001 when the Taliban fell. Do you still want to pursue your political commitment? Absolutely. Life will have no meaning for me if, I, if my people back home are in dire situation. Their rights and, uh, rights and liberties are limited. Um, they are oppressed by minority military group. And I, uh, you know, enjoy in the Western world. No, it doesn't. Life doesn't have a meaning for me. I will continue my political struggles in a different uh, way, in a different shape. How much impact I will make on the ground is a different scenario. But I will continue to stand with people of Afghanistan who are protesting, putting their lives at risk for their rights. Very briefly, are you planning on going back to Afghanistan? Yes, definitely. Fauzi Akufi, thank you for being on our program. Thank you for watching. Do stay tuned for more news on France 24.